Um, so since I last did an update, we've had an 8.17 release, but because we also changed our feature freeze process to only include um, actual regressions during the uh, release candidate phase of the release, we are also almost at the stage where we are freezing 9.0. So in 8.17, the main thing we shipped was squash for merge requests, and then we had a couple of patches to fix things for that. In 9.0, which will freeze tomorrow and will be, um, sorry, will freeze after tomorrow and will be released on the 22nd of March, um, we're going to be shipping reordering issues in issues boards, which is going to be awesome. Um, so that was started off by Dower and then Valerie and Phil have been working on finishing it. Um, we've got uh, version four of our API, which is also awesome because it lets us um, break a lot of um, inconsistent or confusing or bad behavior in the V3 API and um, mark that for deprecation. So that'll be removed soon. So Oswaldo, Tone, uh, Roberts, and a bunch of other people have been working really hard on that. We've also um, been working on some performance improvements because of the amount of breaking changes. We haven't got to as many as I'd have liked, um, but we do have three there from Felipe, Yaka, and Adam um, that I hope will improve performance. Um, we believe they will, but we haven't actually deployed a 9.0 um, release candidate to gitlab.com. So unfortunately I can't show charts from the monitoring for that, but we do believe that there are um, decent improvements to the issue and MR index page in general, and also to the um, dashboard where you can see all the issues assigned to a particular user or all the MRs assigned to a particular user. And there's also an improvement to notes polling um, when we're um, loading new notes as you come in um, on an issue page. Uh, things that didn't go so well in the last release and a half, um, we were working on a license finder feature for EE, um, but that turned out to be way more complicated than we realized. It needs um, basically to run in a CI environment, but to make it a good feature, we need some auto configuration stuff that's kind of tricky as well, because the license finder gem that we use, um, first of all, when it um, figures out for Ruby dependencies, um, it will actually evaluate your gem file, which is a bad thing because then people can run whatever code they want. Um, but also it can shell out to different package managers for different languages rather than just um, implementing the, the passing of the dependencies in, um, in Ruby. So that was going to be much trickier. Um, we would also need a way to get the results back from CI in a good way and display them nicely in the UI. So we switched to working on a different feature, which is service desk. Um, because we started that later in the cycle, that means it'll be finished later in the cycle. So it'll be ready for 9.1 instead of 9.0. Um, and again, I'm gonna blame somebody else on the breaking changes because we had a lot of those. We've spent much less time fixing bugs. So we fixed bugs that are regressions, but we haven't fixed bugs that are um, just existing bugs that I would like to get fixed, which is very frustrating for me as a, as a lead personally, because um, I have a list of issues that I care about, which is mostly bugs, and that has been growing during this cycle. So I'm really hopeful we can get some of those done in 9.1. Uh, speaking of which, um, the main things we're looking to ship in 9.1 are our service desk, um, which I just mentioned. We're gonna work on multiple assignees just for issues to start with, so that you can assign multiple people to an issue, which will, at least for us, solve the problem where you have um, an issue with someone from the back end team and someone from the front end team working on it. And only one of them can be assigned at a time. So the other one has to just know that they're working on that issue rather than looking at a list of their assigned issues. Um, we're not doing that for merge requests as a first step, just for issues, and then we can go from there. Uh, we're also working on a burn down chart for EE. So we're gonna add a closed apps field to issues and then calculate a burn down chart based on that. It won't preserve um, the history of state changes. So like if you add um, a closed issue to a milestone and then like open it and then close it again, it will, it will just assume it was opened on the open date and closed on the closed date. It won't care about when it was added to the milestone or that it was closed the first time. So it's quite a simple burn down chart to start with, but we can um, implement it like that and see how it goes. 
Um, also, the notes polling that I mentioned uses um, some middleware that um, Adam's written with help from, uh, with design from Andrew, um, which uses e tags to um, only hit Redis if a resource hasn't changed, which means that we can be much more efficient when we're polling. Um, if that goes well um, in 9.0 for the existing polling we have, we can look at doing that for um, issue titles. Uh, in future, um, I want to schedule more bugs. I'm just going to keep mentioning that until I get some bugs fixed that I care about. Um, I still want to refactor the notification settings, which I think I've mentioned the last couple of times. I think we're getting close to being able to do that now. Um, once nested groups is released in 9.0, which is from Dimitri, our CTO, um, mostly he's developed this feature by himself. Um, we need to see how people use that and how people expect it. And then we can start working on group level issue boards. Um, also, I want to help the edge team pick up and finish some of the community MRs that we have that have stalled. Um, we have a lot of those in the discussion team. There are two um, merge request coaches at the moment, Adam and myself, and Oswaldo um, is helping out with some community merge requests and may decide who wants to become a merge request coach in the future. So those are the things um, we care about. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can see if there are any questions. Um, so Jim asks, does the V4 API allow better migration from GitHub? Um, no, I don't think really. Uh, our API isn't, I don't think it's designed to be deliberately incompatible with GitHub, um, but it's not designed to be compatible with GitHub necessarily either. It's, um, it's whatever works best for our application. Um, and I assume that in this case, you mean, um, people having existing things that hit the GitHub API that they want to hit the GitLab API with instead. Um, so yeah, we don't, maybe it will be worth documenting some of the biggest changes, um, but I don't think we're going to provide like a GitHub API compatibility um, level. Uh, Tone asks is multiple assignees is something that our customers want or something that we want ourselves. Um, and Dimitri said it's both, which is entirely accurate. I think it's one of the most requested features on our issue tracker. Um, it's been open for ages. It's got over a hundred thumbs ups, I think, which is a lot. Um, and yeah, people definitely want that one. And Yob asks if the live issue titles will be the first use case for the ETAG's live data approach. Um, yes and no. Um, we already have notes polling and we use, we're going to use the e-tags on that because then we're not adding polling, we're actually making the existing polling faster. Um, but the idea is that if issue titles works well, then we will extend that to other things. Um, so that was a few questions. Um, I'm going to take a leaf out of Dower's book and give everybody 20 seconds to ask more before I um, end the call. So 20 seconds has already started. Ten seconds left. <laughs> I can show you my phone. That's twenty seconds. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye.